What's up, Kyle Gang? Welcome back to Sony Mechanics and Materials. So let's solve this problem. So I just drove, I just uh, solved 6.50, very similar to this one, but we're going to go a step further. And our goal was to find the resultant force uh, the moment exerts, right? So the moment is exerting a force uh, on the top and the bottom of this beam. So we can look basically, you see that the beam is divided like this. So we're going to find the force basically that this is getting exerted onto this force, this beam here. So let's go ahead and solve for that. So if you want to find that force, we need to first find bending stress. And to use that, we're going to find this equation. So this equation is uh, bending stress is equal to moment times distance in the y direction uh, over moment of inertia. So we know that moment is 10 kip feet, so we already have that. Y is the distance from the center of, uh, center of mass of the shape. So we can go ahead and draw in the center of mass of the shape. right? Because the shape is symmetrical, we know that it's, uh, center of mass is going to be halfway to the top. So if it's 10 inches tall, then y bar is equal to 5 inches. So this y is going to be 5 inches because the maximum bending stress we experience is going to be located at the top or at the bottom of this beam, where it is the most distance away. And so that means all we have to do is find the moment of inertia. So moment of inertia for a rectangle is 1 12th base height cubed. Right? Now, because uh, we don't have to worry about the rest of the parallel axis theorem, because both of our shapes lie on the center of mass. Right? If these shapes were to lie off the center of mass, then we would have had to do a little bit more with the parallel axis theorem. But the way we can do it is we know that we have this hollow center. And to get rid of this hollow center, we can take the moment of inertia of the whole rectangle, and then we can subtract out the moment of inertia of the inner rectangle. So to do that, we're going to use this equation twice. So we're going to subtract one from the other, but both of them are going to have that 112. So let's factor that out. So the whole rectangle has a base of 8 inches and a height of 10 inches. So base times height cubed. Then we're going to subtract it from the moment of inertia of the inner one, which has a base of 6 and a height of 8. Then we're going to find that this moment of inertia is equal to 410.67 inches to the fourth. All right, great. So then all I need to do is find the maximum bending stress. So let's just plug it all into the equation. Right? We know it's equal to the moment, which is 10 kip feet. However, we want to convert to inches so we can get to KSI or PSI. So we're going to do 12 to convert from feet to inches. Then we're going to multiply by distance in the y, which we know is 5 inches to the top. Then we're going to divide by moment of inertia, 410.67. And we're going to find that our max bending stress is equal to 1.46 KSI. Okay, so from here we want to find the resultant force that the moment exerts on the top and bottom boards. So let's go ahead and draw a little image of what's happening. So now I'm going to draw this, but rotate at 90 degrees. I'm looking at it from the side view. So this is 10 inches tall, right? And we have our, like our beam up here, which is one inch tall. Right? So what's our, what's our stress, or basically what's our bending stress look like on here? Well, because uh, bending stress is related to distance away from the center of mass, if our distance y is zero, then our bending stress is zero. So if y is zero, uh, five inches, we're lying right in the middle, then it's gonna be zero. But it's gonna increase linearly either direction to a maximum, right? So it's going to max out here at 1.46 KSI, and it's also going to max out here 1.46 KSI. Now because the moment points upward, it's compressing the top, so the top is in compression, and the bottom is in tension, so it's going to point outward, like this. So basically what we're trying to do is we want to find the force in just this section, so let me circle that in blue. Right, we have this shape here. Now if we're trying to find force, what equation can we use? Well, we know that stress is equal to force divided by area. So what we need to do is find the area of this section and then multiply it by the average bending stress in the shape. So it's going to be average bending stress times area is equal to the force. And so again, we're looking at just the top and the bottom boards. We know they're going to be the same. So first of all, the area of this, right, it's eight inches wide and an inch tall, so the area is eight inches. And then the bending stress, 
Well, we need to find the average, so we know that it maxes out at 1.46 KSI. So then we need to find basically what's this point at 9 inches. So if you want to find that bending stress an inch down from the top, let's label this uh, bending stress prime. Let's do the same equation. The moment is going to be, again, 10 kip feet times 12 inches. Then we're going to multiply it by 4 because it's going to be going 4 inches away to the center. Then again, divide it by the moment of inertia. You're going to find that this bending stress prime is equal to 1.17 KSI. So here, now we know that right here is 1.17, but not 1.14, 1.17 KSI. So the average of these is just going to be adding them up and dividing it by 2. So let's go to this equation. We're going to go right, 1.46 plus 1.17 divided by 2, so that's the average of them. And then we said the area is 8 inches, and that equal to force. Plug this in, you get that force is equal to 10.5 kip. And that's our final answer. Right. So a pretty cool problem, right? Uh, just about making sure you know how to do this diagram. So thanks for watching, thanks for the support. If you're still struggling, check out my playlist for more problems from chapter 6, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.